Hi, in this video, we're going to create a very simple WebAssembly module. Firstly, to give, us, give you a better understanding of the structure of WebAssembly. Secondly, to learn a little about how WebAssembly is, is run and integrates with JavaScript within, within the browser host. Now, WebAssembly is a compilation target that supports a wide range of programming languages, and each language has its own tool chain. However, to keep things simple, we're going to be using WebAssembly Studio, which is an online environment for creating WebAssembly modules. Here we can see that WebAssembly Studio supports a wide range of programming languages. For this example, we're just going to simply pick the first on the list and go with a C project. So you can see WebAssembly Studio is a fairly conventional development environment. On the left, we have files and folders, and on the right, we can see the, the contents of the various files within our project. Here we can see that the C application that WebAssembly Studio has generated for us is really quite simple. It, it is a single function called main, which returns the value 42. So in order, order to execute it first, we need to build it. And we can see here in the output pane that the compilation process has been a success. And then we need to execute it or run our application. And here on the bottom right hand pane, we can see the expected result 42. Now, within this video, I want to dig into the, dig into the details of, of our WebAssembly module and the execution environment. But in order to do that, I think we'll need a slightly more, um, slightly more complicated, slightly more involved uh, WebAssembly application. So here, I'm going to replace the main function with an ever so slightly more complicated function. The power function here takes a number and raises it to an integer of power. And I don't need to walk through the implementation. It really is quite trivial, an, an iterative multiplication. So the first step is to save and once again build our C code. And on the left hand side, we can see the output. Um, our compiler tool chain has created a WebAssembly module. So let's take a look at that. Firstly, we're going to view it in its native binary format. WebAssembly modules are, are distributed in binary. They're not a text-based format to, as, as you, you'd expect from things languages like JavaScript. You can see that WebAssembly is itself quite compact, making it fast to distribute and fast to parse and, and execute within the browser. Alternatively, you can look at WebAssembly in its text format. So here we can gain a slightly better understanding of the composition of a WebAssembly module. So first we can see here uh, a couple of type definitions. This is the type section. These type definitions are then used by some of the functions later on in the module. And again, this makes a more compact format. You declare the type signatures up front so that they're not repeated. Next, we can see the, the result of compiling the C power function to WebAssembly. And these are the underlying WebAssembly instructions that have been generated by the compiler. Again, a relatively simple application. We'll not dive into too many of the details, but I'm sure you can, roughly speaking, understand what some of these instructions do. For example, we have an add function, which takes the two previous values which have been pushed on the stack, adds them together, and, and pushes the result back onto the stack. Or we have a a assigned less than comparison that allows us to do simple branching operations. If you've ever worked with any sort of assembly language, uh, this will probably feel quite familiar to you. So how is this, this WebAssembly module actually executed within the browser? To understand that, we look at the uh, main.js JavaScript file. The first thing we notice here is WebAssembly isn't loaded into the browser using a script tag. Instead, it has to be loaded by our JavaScript host, here using the fetch API. Once it's fetched, it's, it's um, accessed as an array buffer, and then the WebAssembly interface, or the WebAssembly APIs, are used to instantiate our WebAssembly module. So this takes the, the WebAssembly binary, compiles it, and creates a single instance of our module. And you can also create multiple instances if you wish. Once we have an instance of our module, we can then gain access to the functions that it exports. So here, we'll update the code to invoke our power function. And if I save and run that, we'll see the result as expected is 256. So this, this simple example illustrates a few important features of WebAssembly. 
an interesting observation here is that WebAssembly itself doesn't have any uh, built-in I.O. functionality. WebAssembly cannot access the DOM or the file system or sockets. In order to do anything useful, it needs to interoperate with its host environment, in this case, JavaScript. And your browser now has effectively two virtual machines that work in cooperation. You have your JavaScript virtual machine and your WebAssembly virtual machine that are that are in some in some ways tightly coupled to to work together. So hopefully through this video you've got gained a slightly better understanding of the structure of a simple WebAssembly module.